Good morning. It's my pleasure to welcome you to unite with us in worship at Seven Locks Baptist Church this glorious morning. Whether you're with us in person or through uh, Facebook or YouTube, our hearts unite in thanksgiving and praise to Almighty God. Let us begin with prayer. Our Father, we come to you this morning with hearts overflowing with gratitude for the showers of blessings you rain on us every day. We thank you especially for that greatest of all gifts, your Son Jesus, through whom we are saved. Though we are experiencing difficulties, even tragedies in this world, we know you love us and are with us in every circumstance. And we know you hear our every prayer and know the longings of our hearts our concerns for one another and for our country. We pray today for strength, Lord, for patience, for wisdom, and for opportunities to show your love to those around us. We pray you lead us and guide us in everything we do and say, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from 1 John 4, verses 7 through 12. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed us his love among us, he sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. Good morning, and welcome to worship at Seven Locks Baptist Church. Our first song is Build My Life, so please join us. Thank you. 
Our scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 4. We're going to read the entirety of Psalm 4 together this morning. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your bed, search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me to dwell in safety. Our next song is Joyfully. joy it is to be together today. God, we pray that you would speak, that you would challenge us, that you would convict us, that you would encourage us, 
God, that you would fill our hearts with joy. God, something we need so much right now. Lord, give us hope. Give us direction. Know that you are with us. And because your presence is in our lives, God, we're not the same. We love you and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's one thing I figured out this week that when it's not around, I really, really miss it. And I don't know I miss it until it's been gone for a while and then suddenly it's not gone again. And what I'm talking about is the sun. Now, I don't know about you all, but I forget sometimes that during the winter, it gets really gray. And you, you just get up and you keep going and you do the very best you can. But then when the, on the days when the sun is shining, it's like all of a sudden your lungs have a new capacity for oxygen that you did not know you possessed. There's a spring in your step. I remember last week it was gray until Thursday in food ministry. And I was outside talking with some of our volunteers and all of a sudden it was like, wow, this feels like a totally brand new day. What is so different about today? It was like, well, the sun is shining, of course. And with exactly when the light shines, it makes such an impact in our lives. And as we're talking more this month about what it means to walk in the light and live in the light and be the people of light. To be the servants of light. As God is moving, we turn our attention to Psalm 4. And in that, we are going to find an expression of prayer that is both honest and hopeful. Because it asks the question of us, when, when we are not okay, when we are struggling, is that okay to come to God with that? Do we have the freedom... To express our struggles to God. And what we're going to find is yes. God can handle your honesty. We're also going to find that in the midst of that. We find a reminder of our identity. As we come to, in, to God in prayer. We find both a boldness. If we can be bold with God. We can be bold with humans. We can also find a reminder of who we are as servants of the light, as followers of Christ, that God is with us and working. And we can remember that what we need most of all when we, right now when we're trying to make sense and finally figure out what it is that we need most, it's the light of God's presence in our lives. And to know that as, as that light is in us, we can keep moving forward. We can find joy even on the worst days. We can find peace even if the crisis we find ourselves in has not passed. So let's dive back in to Psalm 4. It says, God, hear me. Answer me. Are you listening to me? I'm not okay. I'm struggling. Listen to me and have mercy. Because I, I need something I don't have. And you people... Who are, who are causing problems, who are stirring up trouble for me, who are diminishing my glory, pulling away from the, our glory as a people. Are you tired? Or have you had enough? How long will you look to false gods? How long will you look to things that cannot satisfy you to bring peace? Do you not know that the Lord is with his servant? That the Lord has a plan and the Lord is going to bring that to, to reality, to fruition the day is coming. So now in this time, repent when you are on your beds in the place that you would plot in secret. Turn from that. Offer the right sacrifices and offerings to get you into right standing with God. Because He is what you need. Turn to Him and trust in Him, please. God, the people ask me, when will the Lord shine His face again? When will the Lord intervene? When will He do something? So I say, Lord, let Your light shine on us. So that when things return to normal, when the harvest comes in and everything is plentiful, plentiful once again, that we will give joy, we will give praise to You in joy. But even until then, I will lie down and I will sleep in peace. For I know even though this has not passed, you give me safety. 
So I will rest in your presence. I had a conversation years ago with a good friend of mine. And one of the things that they said to me was, when I pray, I can't get mad at God. I, 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 I'm afraid to do that. I'm afraid to really express what's going on with me because how could I ever question God? I'm afraid that if I got angry with God, God would get angry with me. If you've ever felt that way, there's a great antidote to that. It's the book of Psalms. And I've said this before, but it bears repeating, especially now in this new year after last year. Psalms is a book of prayer that has all different forms of prayer. It has those of rejoicing, those of praising God, those of thankfulness, those that talk about the, the royal king dynasty of the line of David. There are others that are psalms of lament, that are crying out to God, asking for help when the people are not okay, when David wasn't okay, and the others who contributed to the book of Psalms, when they were not okay, they cried out to God. And if you're afraid that if you do that and you're really honest with God, if you're sad, mad, depressed, just off. Whatever it might be, you're afraid, if you're afraid of opening yourself up to God like that, that He might destroy you, I can tell you that the authors of the book of Psalms paved the way and they did not get destroyed for their honesty. In fact, again and again, the Psalms say that God longs for our honesty, longs for us to open up and tell Him what's really going on. Because quite frankly, do we not think He knows? And maybe you're afraid that whatever might come out of your mouth might be disrespectful to God. It might, you might be something that you're just frustrated about and you're afraid that you're going to offend God. But remember, He sent His one and only Son to die on the cross for our sins. And in that moment, Jesus, the Son of God, who is the very nature of God, took all of our ugliness upon Him at that moment. Everything that had ever been done, everything that will ever be done. And I'm not talking in 2021. I'm talking however long humanity walks this earth. Jesus died for all of it in that instant. All of that ugliness. All of that sin was upon him in that moment. And so do you think if he took all of that on himself 2,000 years ago or close to it, that he cannot handle your bad day or your bad year? He can. And we ought to find great hope where David says in this moment, Hey, God, are you listening? Do you hear me? Because I am not okay. I'm in a crisis and I need you to answer me. And I need some mercy. Have you felt like that lately? What's great is I was studying this. Charles Spurgeon praises David's honesty here. And then because he turns in his prayer from praying to God to actually speaking to the people who caused the problem. The crisis in this situation, we don't know all of the specifics. The best guess that people have is that David is king and someone has been participating in some form of idolatry or they're doing something that has brought sin into the house of Israel and it's caused a famine or a drought and the people are suffering and they've come to their king for guidance. And so David, after he is bold and honest with God, Spurgeon says that if you are willing to be bold and honest with God, a byproduct of that is that it gives you the ability to be bold and courageous in talking to other humans. Because if you can be honest with your creator, the one who, if, he, if anyone could smite you, to use a good old-fashioned term, it would be God. If you're willing to just be honest with God, then you can be honest with human beings because they don't have the same power that God does. But this honesty in prayer gives us the boldness to say what needs to be said in the way that it needs to be said because there is a way that it should be said. And that's with honesty and kindness and integrity not and boldness, not just offensively. There, there, there's a difference. But David says what needs to be said in that moment. And he says, how long are you going to look to other things? Because none of these other things can fulfill us. They're all going to leave us mourning and look what it's done. He says, that's why I remind you that the Lord is with his servant. 
those who were the servants of the light, God is making a way for them. So he says to them and implores them in their private place. When it says on their bed, that, that's a metaphor in that time for, the, for in private. The places where they would plot and they would make their schemes or they would succumb to temptation. However you want to look at that, probably all of the above. David's saying in that private place, give that to God. Come back. Even in that moment, as he's speaking boldly to these people who, are, who have contributed to a situation and a crisis that now he as king must lead the people, cry out to God on their behalf, but also try to lead them forward. Hear what he says to the people there. He's offering them another shot. He's saying, repent, turn away from this. Offer the right sacrifices. And basically, get right with God. Turn your heart to him because he can help us. He can help you. And trust in him. And then David turns back to God. And he says, let the light of your face shine on us. In the wintertime, the sun is our friend. In the summertime, sometimes you're like, yeah, you could go behind the cloud for a little while and hang out, buddy. But in the wintertime, when there's no sun, not only is it depressing and gray, but it's colder. It's damper. The air is heavier. And if there's any wind, it's not fun. People look like Eskimos if they have to go outside in that kind of weather. But when the sun is shining, even if it's still 48 degrees, if the sun is out, you see people walking around in t-shirts or running down the street in shorts. I'm like, what's wrong with y'all? It's still 48 degrees outside, but hey man, the sun is out, I am good. But that's how we feel. Because that light shines on us. And it warms us and it reminds us that, hey man, it might be cold, but the sun is still there. So eventually the weather's going to change and it's going to be hot. And this thing that we long for, we're going to run from later in the year because it's going to be too hot. And it just goes, man, people, we have problems, right? But in this instance, the sun is a, is a shining. When, when David says, let the light, your light shine on us, it's an evidence of his presence. Moving among us. God, in this moment, it's a dark moment. And it's not over. And we're dealing with it. And we're having to wade through it. But let your light shine on us so we can see our way through it. Maybe not all the way out of it yet. But at least through it, God. To know that we're not walking through it alone. Because when people ask me, how long is this going to go on? David says to God, I don't know. But I do know that you're the way out. You shine on us. When, the, when things go back to normal, when the harvest abounds once again, I will take great joy because I know that it's you. And I think that's such a, a, a great encouragement to us as we are wading through the aftermath of 2020 and we are trying to get 2021 to start taking its meds again. I had a talk with them. I had a talk with 2021 this morning. I said, hey, we can't have another week like last week. Stop. But even if it doesn't, we can keep going because the light of God's presence is moving through it. And we know that when this is over, we're going to rejoice and it's going to be because of God. Now, the, the last verse is one that my sister-in-law taught my kids to help them when they're going to bed at night so that, you know, they're, you know, being a little kid in a dark room is a challenge, right? You remember those days. And so my Alma and my sister-in-law both taught him this verse. I will lie down and sleep in peace, for you, O Lord, make me to dwell in safety. And we say that verse a lot at our house at night. But as I was studying this week and examining it in the context of Psalm 4, what David says it's not when everything, he's not saying, God, when every bit of this crisis has passed, when everything's done, then I will lie down and sleep in peace. He's saying, no, right now, even when I'm a mess, people are a mess, everything's a mess, these people are causing problems for me, my hair is turning gray or it's falling out. Even in this moment, I will lie down and sleep in peace. For you, O oh Lord, make me to dwell in safety. Because I know that when I go to sleep, when I get up, the sun will come up again. 
there will be a new day and it will be a reminder of the light of your presence in my life. So because of that, I'm going to make it. God can handle your honesty. In fact, I, th I don't think there are many things that God craves from us more than honesty and obedience. And honestly, oh, honesty is a form of obedience. It is a way of uh, saying, okay, God says, trust me with everything. Okay, God, here you go. And that's a big step for us because that means we are laying ourselves out. But I'm telling you, as the Psalms say later, a broken and contrite heart you not deny. When we come to God and we're honest with God with all of the things that we're feeling and struggling with and all of the promises around them and we place it in his hands. Say, God, I need you to hear me. I need your light. God says, okay. Because there's nowhere else we can turn. And we need his light. And even on the darkest of days, that light of his presence is with us. Jesus said that right before he went back to heaven when he gave the Great Commission. The very last thing he said to his disciples was, and I am with you always to the very end of the age. He is not on a coffee break. He is with us now, even in these moments. So let us be honest as we need his encouragement. Let us know that the light of his presence is what's lighting our way. And that even right now, in the midst of everything going on, we can find peace and rest in his presence. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we love you. God, we need your light. We need your grace to shine on us. We need you to... Light our path. God, show us where we can find our hope and our peace. Lord, we love you, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. Uh, at this time, we are going to turn the cameras around so that we can greet and wave everyone who's joining us from home. So just to warn everyone who's in person, fix your hair, make sure everything's straight. Those of you that count your hairs, some of us can do that. Okay, we're going to turn the cameras around. Everybody wave big. Everybody at home, wave back at us. We can't see you, but pretend that we can. And as we close, we're going to sing one more chorus of There's Power in the Blood. But first, let's say hello to everyone at home. This is Facebook, YouTube. You are joining us now. I apologize. We have... All right, now we're going to very slowly pan back. Get our YouTube. Hello again, Facebook. All right, as we close today, uh, we want to remind you that our business winter quarterly winter business meeting is coming up Sunday, January 31st. If you are live in person with us after uh, the closing of our um, final course of There's Power in the Blood. We ask you to remain in your seats until our ushers come and help you uh, help dismiss you by row so that we can do all the good things of social distancing, distancing that we need to do as we pass. But don't forget our business meeting is coming up January 31st. That will be on Zoom. We'll have more information about that in the weeks to come. Again, thank you so much for being a part of our worship today. Uh, I hope wherever you are, whether you're in the sanctuary or at home, you get out to enjoy the beautiful sunshine for a few moments today. To remember, that's the light of God's presence shining in our hearts, reminding us that even in our worst times that we're not alone. But we're going to sing this, and then we will go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you Wednesday night.